So Greg, it's great to be here on the Fujitsu stand with you at Mobile World Congress. There's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of it's about AI, which you all are demonstrating throughout the booth. So maybe tell us a little bit about some of the applications, starting with the alarm storm detector. Thanks, Sean. Welcome to the Fujitsu booth. Alarm storm detector is really our AI ML application. It's an R app in the ORAN. And what it does is we've combined our network operations knowledge with AI to really help network performance. And uh, when there's a network trouble, what we really realized is that it's not a low level of trouble, but big spikes, which can be a little bit overwhelming to network operations teams. And we realized they've been spending days and weeks looking for the root cause. So using our uh, AI tools, we can find the exact root cause of a network trouble, throwing away hundreds and thousands of derivative alarms and getting to the root cause. Yeah, a lot of interest in how you can leverage that RIC platform and the uh, developing app ecosystem to drive really exciting kind of operational efficiencies. So what else are you thinking about doing there? So we're big believers in sustainability and energy efficiency. So last year at MWC 23, we demonstrated our Energy R app, which really um, uses AI to keep the quality of experience but switch off network capacity so that um, operators can save up to 50% power of their radio network. And then at uh, the ORAN Alliance Plug Fest in 2023, it was demonstrated to be 20% better than any competitor. So we're really uh, excited to be rolling that one out as well. And those both are part of our Virtura Intelligent Application Suites. So those are the first two, and we're going to keep rolling them out. Well, you know, as you keep rolling it out, maybe you can give us a, a little insight into what's your kind of near-term strategy. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so uh, when we're using neural networks to do alarm storm detection and find the root cause, then we're saying, as long as we're training that AI model, why can't we get predictive? So the next step that we're working on right now to release is predictive maintenance. So when we detect degradation of network parameters, we already present that to the operator. Yeah, so you know, at the show, uh, I said there's been a lot of talk about AI, that's the dominant theme, but you know, instead of that kind of hype, there seems like there's some really substantive things happening that are gonna have pretty close in impact, but I'm curious where you see all of this going long term when we think about AI as maybe even a sort of killer use for the network. Right, right, it's a great point. Um, we're really practical, it's like AI is here now and we can really um, help network operations today. But as you're saying, like AI is gonna be transformative to network operations. So what we're thinking is, um, we're working on a large language model, sort of a chat GPT interface for network operators too, looking at log files and huge petabytes versus of data and then helping the network operator query that database. But what we realized is LLM can't operate on all that raw, so we invented a new kind of AI called automatic knowledge extraction, which really is like a bridge between all that multi-vendor, multi-domain data and the network operator so they can get the answers back to their questions on how to really um, operate a network more efficiently. So as we're doing the, like the step-by-step um, uh, automation. It, we're really working towards light touch operations on our way to zero pane of glass. Well, Greg, I can't wait to see where all this goes, but I appreciate you taking the time to give our audience an update here from the FIRA. Thanks much, Sean. Good to talk to you.